Okay. So it is 11 o'clock now. Um, I'm going to jump into it. If anyone comes a little bit late, this recording will be pushed over to YouTube as well. So able to check in um, over there. So first off, I would like to welcome you all to another session of NTOP Live. We're about a couple of weeks into these sessions and I think it's been a very exciting platform where people on our team, people at NTOP on different teams are able to share different workflows that they find valuable with um, all of you. And so for a little information about myself, my name is Annika Norden. I'm a customer success engineer here at Entopology. I've done one of these before, so maybe I've seen some of you before. However, if not, um, if you're new to these NTOP Lives, I definitely urge you to head over to our YouTube channel after this. There's been a lot of exciting workflows that people have been sharing and definitely fun to see. Also, um, if you've been here before, welcome back. So to dive right into things, today we're going to be looking at the design behind the COVID-19 test swabs that we were able to work on in collaboration with Origin. Um, this is a very exciting project, definitely my favorite project that I have worked on. Um, one reason being that it was a very high impact application, but also it really demonstrates the power of the software because as you'll see as we get into the things that this is a very simple workflow, but because of how we went through the process, how we collaborated with others, it is now ramping up production to being to having about a million of these printed every week and sent out to hospitals in need. So we collaborated with a company called Origin. They're a 3D manufacturing company. And they had picked up on a call, from, a call for designs from the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And so there they were doing some testing. Um, as we know, we're in a global pandemic right now, which has led to a lot of medical supply shortages. And one of the shortages was within these, um, these nasal swabs. And so, the, at Beth Israel, there was an initiative to get a lot of different companies, whether they're different softwares, different manufacturing companies to come together and help design a new nasal swab that we could then ma mass manufacture and get out to testing and help those in need. And so this was a very collaborative effort. Many different companies submitted and shared their designs, which allowed for a nice guideline um, to help others work from. We were able, everything was open source. So you're able to learn from other designs, pick up on um, factors that helped within the designs and some preliminary testing and work on our design from there. So as far as our design, um, the design team was made up of myself, Alex Mekas, Director of um, Customer Success and Brad Rothenberg, our CEO. And so, we all worked on this collaboratively in different ways. Uh, the first iteration was done between Alex and myself in actually under an hour. Um, pretty funny story. It was just a Friday afternoon, I'd say around four o'clock. I get a message from Alex saying, um, asking if he could turn, if we could turn around a project in just about an hour because that was the original deadline that we had in place to get the mesh to the printers um, and into testing over the weekend. And so, Within that hour, we were able to get this first iteration that you see on the screen here. From there, um, into the weekend, did a little bit of other iterations on there. And then we were able to pass it off to Brad where he was able to create a DOE, also known as a design of experiments, where we're able to really hone in on the proper parameters and find that exact design that we know that will collect the most material for testing, but also be not as invasive. So it's a, a nice, easy testing process. So once we submitted our designs, passed them off to Origin, uh, we were able to get them up to speed with the software as well. So they were able to go in and quickly iterate, change a couple of parameters. And then through a couple of weeks of testing over at the Beth Israel Labs, um, Little by little, and top our, our initial design swap just kept passing um, the different rounds of clinical testing. Um, most recently, it was passed 
within some FDA requirements. And now because of that, Origin has been ramping up production to print about more than a million of these a week. And um, we're able, companies and hospitals are able to order these swabs and get them shipped pretty quickly so that they're able to continue with COVID-19 testing. So very exciting story, um, but now how to actually make this swab within the software. Um, so we will, I'll walk you through this initial workflow that we have here, very simple. Um, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So as you see up above here, I have defined a couple of points along the swab. So if I turn on the visibility of just these points here, you'll see how from the swab, we have these points along in this vertical direction. This is where we have our head. This is where the break point is. This is where the handle is going to be. Um, all of these were defined before. These I was able to come up with these because of the fact that this was an open source call for design. Um, we were able to follow some design requirements, whether it was a specified section length or some recommended dimensions, maybe a recommended radii, um, and then kind of work from there. So we have our initial points. And then the next step was to generate cylinders. So this design that we have here is actually just a bunch of cylinders. Um, pretty simple. How that works is I'm able to bring in these predefined points and then define a radius to create that cylinder. So we see here, we've got our base cylinder. We have a little bit thinner break off point up here um, and then going into the neck and then where the head design space is. Um, and then by using a quick Boolean union operation, as you see, if I expand it here, I'm able to bring in a few of these cylinders and just union them into a singular body. Also, you, you'll notice I added a bit of a blend radius here. Um, this I have included, so we have a little bit nicer of a transition. Um, once we look at another iteration, we'll see that the transitions change a little bit there, but that was a nice um, low fidelity transition that we have within the staff. Now looking at the design space for the the head, let's see up here. So this is the original design space for the swab head. Um, as you can see, it's actually just a sphere and a cylinder combined. Um, but with our Boolean operations, was able to bring those two quickly together. Also, you'll notice that we have these chips in here that are associated with these variables out here. So I made these inputs a variable so that I'm easily able to access them and change around the swab radius or where the point tip starts. And then as far as actually <clears throat> creating the head here, I used a Voronoi volume lattice. So this is a very um, popular lattice within the software because of how it creates an organic like um, random structure. So how I went about building that is I start with this design space and then I'm able to bring that body into this block. So this is a random points and body block. If I turn on the visibility here, you'll see it just creates these points. So I bring in a body, I define my point spacing of about 1.5 millimeters. And from there, it generates about 60 points within that space. You'll notice I also brought in a mesh. So by bringing in a mesh of that original body, we're gonna be able to achieve a much cleaner um, head design, head space, because you have these nice outer boundaries that are gonna enclose that lattice. So as far as generating the actual lattice, um, this graph representation as the lattice, you'll see if I zoom in, these are actually infinitesimally small beams here. So how it's created is these lattices are building around these seed points to try and keep a constant porosity, nice spacing around these random points. Um, and then you get that randomized organic looking lattice. Um, and then the last step to bring it into the implicit world, make it an implicit body is just by offsetting that. 
So I offset it by a distance of 0.25 millimeters. So from each of the beams, we're offsetting 0.25 to therefore reach that um, thickness of 0.5 of that Voronoi lattice. So again, quick first iteration, I'm able to take that head and just blend that together with the staff so that we can achieve this final part. And so from start to finish, start being that initial message that I got from Alex, um, looking into the open call, looking into the designs that were there, um, and actually to get this, um, to mesh this part and get it out to origin, all happened um, under an hour, which I think is really exciting. Um, also, you'll notice that all of this was generated within the software that isn't typical. Um, for a lot of our customers, they'll be designing in whatever CAD software they're used to, and then bringing that part into NTOP platform where they then iterate from there. So this is kind of a unique opportunity that because it was so simple and also because we didn't have anything physical to start from, we're able to generate it completely just within the software. And so as for our next iteration, You'll see this one is a little bit different. If I zoom in on some areas, you'll notice we have a shorter break off point to make sure that after the testing is happening, it's breaking off very easily in a defined location. Um, you'll see we have a nice transition here. This is because we put to use our um, ramping functions to bring the, to offset this um, so instead of using a cylinder like we did before you'll see if I open up this neck um, and isolate that view that we're taking that cylinder and offsetting it so that we have a little bit of ramping and it nicely transitions into the next part of the body let me turn this visibility on again um, also you'll see we have a nicer transition up here as well so as we have this design space here, we're nicely transitioning into that neck so we don't have a tough break off point that might be a little bit more intrusive when using this for testing. Also bringing in a ramp block so that we can change this thickness. So it's a little bit thinner here, the, sorry, the thickness of the lattice, a little bit thinner here, but then thicker up here as well. So if we look at the main body of this workflow, it looks pretty similar. Some things are a little bit different. Also, we're able to use a surface area block so we can look at this, the lattice surface area. Um, this surface area is very important because as you're using this for testing and collecting whatever material, um, you want to have high surface area. So it's grabbing onto everything possible so that can then go into testing to see if um, the virus is present. Um, but you'll notice one main difference if I scroll up above is that we have a lot of these variables defined here. So by defining these inputs, um, for example, if I open this up here, we have a couple of these inputs, those chips that I talked about before as variables. So by defining those and dragging them up into this input section, I can really hone in onto the specific parameters that are important. So maybe if I'm really interested in my lattice diameter because that'll affect my surface area, or if I'm interested in looking at the different radii, also the Voronoi point count, this is gonna be something very specific. I can quickly just go in, bump that number down maybe to 50 and you'll see after a little bit of iterating and rendering that it'll um, pop up here. But as you can see, I have these defined inputs here. I also have a defined output. And basically what I'm doing, um, you'll see it's a little, a little bit denser, hard to see that transition happening, but we'll go into that a little bit later. But by defining my inputs, keeping my body, defining my output, what I'm actually doing is setting this up to create a custom block. So for those not familiar with a custom block, this is similar to a toolkit, a compound block, something where uh, a nice feature in NTOP where I'm able to take an entire workflow, have my body, maybe it's got a bunch of blocks in there that can be a little bit confusing, but just extract my specific um, variables that I'm interested in and then package that up into a single block that only exposes these parameters. So 
all of this body is going to be hidden under the hood. No one really knows what's going on, but maybe for the better because I'm passing this off to another design engineer. Um, and all they care about is this up here. I developed the workflow. I just want to pass it on and they can simply work from there. So to see that in action, I'm going to open up a new instance of NTOP. Um, also, while that loads, I noticed a question. Someone asked about Origin um, being the name of the additive manufacturing and printing lab. Um, yes, that is the case. So Origin, they do their manufacturing over in California, um, and they're doing really exciting work. And I'll go into a little bit more about that afterwards. So here you see I have a new instance of NTOP. What I can do is actually file import. Um, and then grab this swab 2.4 that we were working on. My page looks exactly the same, no different, but if I open this up, you'll see that my block imported properly. And if I type right into here, swab, then you'll see my swab 2.4 pops right up. I click on that, you'll notice, so if I open up another block here, you'll notice I have these two lines so that's signifying that this is a custom block, that this is um, also toolkits will have that same formatting. And then you'll see here when we have that singular line, then that's just uh, one of our original blocks, just for a little bit of context. Yeah, so here we have that exact body imported directly into the system because again, we have this block, we have all of these defined parameters, and then our output was the actual body. So if I wanted to create what um, is known as a design of experiment, a DOE, then maybe what I want to do is have it a little more visible. So I'm just going to open up two more of these blocks, right? So I have three different swabs that I'm very quickly able to change the parameters. Um, right now, they're all overlapping because they're all starting from the same origin. So I'm just going to use a translate. Block. I'm going to drag this in here. Let's translate it by 10 millimeters in the X direction. And then let's do another one and bump that one over 20 millimeters so that we can see them all nicely on one screen. So for those curious about this translate object block, what it's doing is it's bringing in whatever object, in this case, mine is an implicit body, and then it's translating it along whatever vector. So this is just a 20 by 20, zero, zero vector. And if I turn off these visibilities, then you'll see the three that I have here. I can zoom in so we can really look at the changes in these parameters. So here we have my original one. I'm going to keep it as is. I like how it looks. Um, but let's look at this next one. So my middle one, maybe I want it to be a little bit denser. So if I want this lattice structure to be denser, then that means that I want to work with my Voronoi point count. So my Voronoi points, how many little points I have in here that my Voronoi lattice is then building itself around. So for my Voronoi point count, Let's bump it up to maybe 80. Make it pretty, pretty dense here, and we'll wait for that to render. If I go over to my next object, um, maybe I want to work with my lattice diameter. Maybe this is a little too thick. I want it thinner so that we can grab onto material a little bit better. So I can bump this down to 0.2. And so here you can see that very quickly by just bringing in my original custom block of my original swab, moving these around for easier visibility. Um, I'm just able to go in and quickly iterate through these different parameters. So you can see here, these are just three, um, three different heads right here, and you can see how they differ, right? This one's a little bit denser because we have more um, Voronoi points. This one's a little bit more open because we're changing that lattice diameter. And we have all of these variables that we decided were important. 
And so as we're going through that testing, maybe once we pass it off to origin and they really want to hone in on something, they're able to just quickly open up this block, change a parameter, and you saw how fast it was able to regenerate. So, I mean, this is what our final design that we passed off to origin was. From there, it would just be a matter of taking these in, meshing them. If, for example, I'm working in this DOE and I have multiple, um, I can do some list processing so that each of them exports as a mesh with different file names, um, and then go into testing with those specific meshes. But yeah, so being able to mesh this, quickly pass it off to origin, were they able to get them into the labs for testing, where they're also able to take them into their machines and start to mass manufacture and ship off to those in need. So very um, exciting process. You'll see is pretty simple workflow, a lot of power in bringing that into a custom block and being able to quickly iterate through different parameters. Um, but yeah, I think this was a very exciting opportunity. I was thrilled to be a part of it, um, but I know that it was only possible by collaboration, collaboration within my team, collaboration with Origin and the labs at Beth Israel. But it's definitely been a collective effort and only possible because of these different industries and these different partners being able to come together, share information and really focus on generating solutions rapidly. And I think it really points to how powerful rapid iteration is or rapid prototyping and being able to um, look at the power within additive manufacturing as well to help make an impact and do some positive work within this pandemic. And I think it's very exciting because I do see a lot of work with a lot of different companies, whether they're software companies, whether they're more on the side of manufacturing, really putting their heads together and um, being able to solve these tough problems. Yeah, let me take a peek at some of the questions we have here. So as far as changing the thickness, someone asked, how would you change the thickness of the struts to a much smaller thickness? So um, perhaps we're going into um, much, much smaller thicknesses. In, in our system, we're working with millimeters. Um, and once you're defining them, then it, then it keeps to that. Um, however, all it would be doing is just looking at the different conversions of numbers and being able to get down to the proper size. Um, let's see. To determine the density of the swab lattice, we do have a couple of blocks. Um, let's see. So if I go into my mass properties block, um, I'm able to plop a property in there, look at the density, and be able to get a little bit of information out from there. Um, the density, to find the actual density, um, I'm not sure of the exact block, but to find the density, we'd be looking at the volume and then whatever defined um, material that would be from there. Um, making use of a couple of our math operations up here, and we'd be able to pretty pretty easily get a, a nice number to, um, to work from from there. Um, yeah, that looks like all the questions there. Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, again, my name is Annika Norden. Um, my email is Annika Norden at endtopology.com. I would love to get in touch. Um, and oh, I guess I will end on this. Um, so for a little bit more information, I definitely urge you to check out Origin's site. So origin.io slash npswabs. Here you'll get a little bit more information about the testing, about um, how it all came together, some pretty cool images as well, but also looking at the different, the overview of the design and those exact parameters that they ended up going with. Um, and if you are looking to actually request these swabs, um, maybe you need to help supply um, a hospital or something like that, within the Origin website, you'll be able to order that from there. Um, oh, someone just asked about looking back at the modeling workflow. I can pull that up again. So this is the original workflow. This was actually created from scratch within NTOP platform. So just starting with a list of points, 
bringing together mostly cylinders in this case, and then creating that swap design space that we created that lattice from for this final part. But yeah, so for those who did end up joining us a little bit later, um, all of this will be shared on YouTube. While you're there, be sure to check out some of the other NTOC lives. Also, we will continue doing this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So I urge you to check out the schedules and what we'll be talking about on social media. And yeah, looking forward to hearing what you all have to say. Um, and I hope you found this time valuable. Thanks so much and have a nice day.